What's happening, everybody? Cowboy Chuck talking today about understanding more about the game of squad and how to improve your overall in-game experience as a new player, even as a veteran player. Some people have told me, even as veteran players uh, with several hundred hours in game, that this information has helped them. So, what we're going to talk about today in our continuing series on squad basics and improving our understanding of the game is the concept of RAS. You will hear people say they love RAS. Other people will say they can't stand RAS. RAS stands for Randomized, Advanced, and Secure, meaning at its core, from a attacker's perspective, you always have a defense objective that's active. In other words, you know the, obje the objective that you have to be on, but you don't realistically know what the next objective is going to be on. Now, that's a huge caveat to older, more seasoned players. And when I say older, just people who have played the game hundreds of hours. It doesn't matter whether you're 14 years old or 64 years old. doesn't matter. If you've played, you know... Uh, Yiharivka Raz vol, uh, version 1 300 times, you know with some measure of predictability where the flags are going to be. The only way that those objectives can change on a Raz V1 layer is if the server admin changes the Raz seed value. And I believe the value ranges from like 0 to 1,000 or 0 to like 1,500. It's some astronomical number. The point is, let's just say Raz V1 has a seed value of 137. And I'm just making this number up, but it has a set value. If that server admin changes that value to 372, then the Raz V1 that you played the day before on the very same server, you're not going to have the same objectives the next day. That's the beauty of Raz as a layer. That's something that we had been asking for for months and months and months because people suddenly migrated to Raz as a normal map layer because what they're trying to do is prevent the concept of rushing. <clears throat> And anyone that's played advanced and secure on a server knows that when you know where all of the enemy's objectives are, if you can find a path towards their second objective, you can pretty much end the game within 20 to 25 minutes. Because if they don't counter you and go to and rush to your second objective to try and prevent you from moving up, basically you can back cap all of your previous objectives with minimal to no resistance, and you're keeping them from capturing their second objective to move on to their set up to their third or fourth middle objective on the map layer. So, a lot of times, the people that are against Raz is because they are typically on servers that are more competitive and competitive in nature, or they are in the mindset that they just want to punish the opposing team and prevent them from winning. Me, I'm more about fair play and having a more equitable fight around the central objectives of the map. Or even if you do push the opposing team back to their early objectives, it's still nip and tuck. It's still, you know, every revive counts because you do, you're getting low on tickets yourself because they're doing such a good job of forcing you out of tickets by destroying vehicles, destroying your spawn points and things of that nature. I've been on Raz layers as a veteran player where we're down to our last objective and we're losing, you know, two tickets per minute, but we still have like 150 to 180 tickets. So if nobody dies and we don't lose any other vehicles, then conceivably we have another 45 minutes to an hour of gameplay given the two hour match timer. So with Raz, it's important to understand some key concepts and that's what we're going to go over today. So I'm on the training range, like I normally do with most of my training ser series, and I open up the console, and I'm going to say admin change, and I'm going to, oops, hang on, there we go, there we go, got it, admin change layer, and I'm just going to choose Albasra Raz V1 just as an example, and I'll show you why some of the key concepts on Raz 
you need to understand as both, um, we're just gonna approach this from an attacking perspective. So you're leaving your main base, the concept, okay. So on this particular layer, we're spawning in as insurgents, right? <clears throat> and what we're going to do here, you can see with the purpose of RAS is the first objective. Let me create a squad and be squad leader so I can mark stuff on the map. The first objective from main base is right here to island suburbs. Okay. From island suburbs, anyone that's played this map with, you know, repetition understands where the next objectives could be. They could, in theory, kick all the way back over here to suburbs. They could kick up to the mosque area. They could kick up to refinery. They could kick up to west outskirts. There's so many places it could go. You can see where if the entire team just rushed out and let's just say, okay, we're gonna put a fob at refinery and then we're gonna put a fob at west outskirts because that's where the objective is going to go right and they just say okay well that's where and then we're going to rush over here towards uh poppy farm production area and alcora and we're just going to try and prevent them from getting into the map or getting to their first and second layer objectives so the problem with that is when you take that approach um you don't know where the objectives are going to go so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a map here for you just so you can see where, why this is so difficult to predict, okay? Let me pull up my squad maps, and we'll go to Al Basra, Raz V1, okay? This is one layer of Raz V1. So you know we just said the first objective is island suburbs, right? So it's over here. So this particular RAS V1 layer shows you that if the first objective is servo on the west side of the main river, the objective is going to go in a northwesterly fashion. So let's just, for the sake of argument, say that the first objective is island suburbs. What that tells you is the second layer objective is not going to be on this side of the river. So you know that servo is likely not going to be your second objective because you know on another seed value for RAS V1, servo is a first objective. So already in your mind from a planning perspective, you know an area to kind of exclude from your movement. But you know that once you get across this secondary bridge here, you know that, okay, anything on the other side of that bridge is effectively in scope as a potential objective. And for those that are unaware what the map layers could be as it relates to Al Basra Raz V1, let's just say that with the um, with the island suburbs cap, your second level objective, if you had pushed your fob up into this area, you would be mistaken. You would be pushing your fob placement slash radio and hideout placement into enemy positions because from the enemy's perspective their second cap objective is in this area so realistically that's your third cap objective by pushing too far forward and potentially losing those logistical supplies and the ability to place down any sort of radio and spawn point for your team, you're handicapping your team's advance, okay? So the more practical approach, to be honest with you, is, okay, you know Island Suburbs is a cap. You typically don't need to put a fob on the first point. However, with RAS, because of the potential for enemies pushing up into your second level objectives, you've got to get a spawn point away from main base. So on a RAS layer like this, especially if you're facing a faction that has helicopter access, where they can get to refinery before you or mosque or suburbs or something like that, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to place a radio over here. So you at least have one spawn point. And now you can say, okay, if I put one at island suburbs, and let's just say, we'll put it all the way back in the very back corner, right? Put it all the way back here. Now, 
We've got room at suburbs. You've got room at Servo. Um, there's another uh, like courtyard courtyard areas right here. You've got crossroads here. You've got plenty of places where you can place hideout positions to move forward. I would, as an insurgent and militia, because you have similar designs as far as weapons and spawns, I would be placing a radio every opportunity I had. And if that meant putting it in the middle of the open, sometimes you have to do that just so you can get another spawn point forward. So it's designed to be random. You're not supposed to be able to anticipate where the points are going to go. So you have to think of it that way. If you push too far beyond the middle portion of the map, you have a high degree of possibility that the enemy is going to be there waiting for you because they are going to have a similar speed to middle of the map, specifically on this one where it's insurgent versus militia, where you basically have identical weapons and near identical uh, loadout opportunities. Okay, so like I said, over time you can learn the objectives, but it's still random where if even by changing the first objective, it changes the way the map flows. There are websites that show you all the different objectives. I use those websites as a reference point and I'll show you exactly what I do. It's called, there's a, there's a website where you can see all the different objectives, okay? Here's the problem. If you've only used that website, you're not gonna learn the map. The key here is understanding you can see where, okay, if it goes to island suburbs, you know the second objective is going to be across the river, which is the concept I told you about. The next objective, because of how small the city is, you know your second and third objectives are gonna be really close to one another. The enemy's first objective is almost always equidistant to whatever your first objective is. So take a look, I'll just show you. Island suburbs. You know, that's approximately 600 meters. So if you go from the opposing team's main base, 600 meters, more than likely their first capped objective is North VCP ruins. You can already predict that based upon where your first objective is. So use the information you have on your map to anticipate where their objective is going to go. Another key concept, squad balances the map flow. So, thinking about objectives, your, obje uh, your objective is here, their objective is there. If your next objective takes you west 900 meters, look east 900 meters on the opposing team. Because what they're always going to do is they're going to try and keep the objectives in line with one another, but balanced with one another. So you're not going to see, you know, a first objective for one faction here. 600 meters from Maine, and then first objective for another faction be 1,800 meters away. That's not a fair balance of the map. Squad will typically balance the map for you. All right, next thing we want to talk about. From a objective perspective, stick to fob radius as your immediate area. So what I mean by that, here's your first fob radius. Okay, your next objective area should be here, 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 and basically here. You want to be dealing with that area right there. That's where your next fobs should be considered from a placement perspective. You don't want to put one right here because if you do that, you basically block the entire city. You want to put your fobs north and south. So you'll probably put one, you know, maybe you'll sneak one in on this building here. If you do that, now you can say, hey, I can sneak one in this building here. And then that gives you the ability to put multiple spawn points throughout the city, right? You can put multiple spawn points all throughout the city, plus your rally points. And it gives you the ability as an insurgent faction to be able to spawn near the objective. All right. Now, the next thing we want to talk about, <clears throat> when you're placing fobs, the key is use your rally point first because, remember, speed on map based upon faction is critical. You have to know 
what the speed of the opposing faction is. For instance, on this layer, you can see we're facing militia. <clears throat> they are going to have identical speed. So if you can get to the north side of the city within 20 seconds, guess what? So can they. You are likely going to run into targets. So prior to you getting to that north side of the city, about 100 to 200 meters back, somewhere inside the village, you know, somewhere like maybe you're near crossroads or uh, uh courtyard or southwest of mosque or something like that you need to drop a rally point because if another team another squad is pushing let's just say you've got a squad with a friendly vehicle and they're pushing this way and all of a sudden they're not paying attention and they run a mount run into a mine and it destroys a lodgy and full supplies and all the people in the vehicle right that's one whole squad taken out of the fight but if you had dropped as an insurgent a rally point back here, the insurgents get the buddy rally. So that squad leader can then, when they die, deploy a buddy rally off of yours and get his squad back into the city in order to defend and prevent the opposing team getting into the city as quickly as they want to, right? You still might run into contact, you still might die, things of that nature, but you're giving your team the opportunity to spawn forward without the dependence upon a hideout. Okay, rally points down. Now, as you're getting ready to place your hideout and radio, you hear a vehicle. Check your map, look for, and listen to the sounds. You know that as if in this layer right here, you're facing militia. They have the same vehicles as you, as you meaning they have the quick light technicals. They have the motorcycles. They have the same capabilities as you. So listening to your vehicle sounds, your vehicle cues, look at your map, reference where you are, and say, hey, I hear a technical, you know, to my west, open your map. Do you see anything within 100 to 300 meters immediately west of you? No, you don't. Okay, immediately you know the enemy is near. You need to get that radio placed. Tell your squad, do not fire. The priority is getting the, hi the initial hideout up so that in the event you take contact and you die, you have a spawn point, rally point, and the hideout. So now you got two spawn points. <clears throat> Get the ammo crate down as quickly as possible. Teach your squad trigger discipline. The objective is the key, not killing the enemy. A lot of people that come into this game think this is Battlefield where you win based upon how many kills you get. No, this is a ticket-based game. You have to bleed the enemy out of their tickets. If everyone that spawns in on your squad with you rushes away to the west and engages you know that vehicle that they heard well comes to find out that other vehicle was another enemy logistics truck and their squad leader was good got down their radio and hideout their comp their sapper engineer built up their hideout and oh by the way they were the only squad that pushed forward into the city and now half their team spawned in off of that hideout and now your five to eight man squad that's pushing out to the west and not listening to you gets wiped by three squads like that and now your team is hosed so trigger discipline don't shoot at the first thing you hear or see priority is objectives and hideouts and spawn points for your team as a whole all right <clears throat> next thing once you place that radio and like you hear some you hear a vehicle don't drop the supplies right away, okay? Wait until you can confirm you're not within range of an enemy. Because as soon as you start to drop supplies, there's audible or audio cues that the opposing team can hear. If they're within 100 meters of you, anyone with mediocre hearing can hear you dropping supplies out of the trucks because it all sounds the same. It's a, lo it's a loud, mechanical, clunky sound. It's very obvious. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll show you right now. So when you walk up to this vehicle and I hold F, I can unload the supplies. Listen. That sound is identical for every faction. It doesn't matter what vehicle you have. It's all the same.
And when you're unloading a vehicle or loading a vehicle, it is 100% obvious what's going on. Okay. Now, other thing is, <clears throat> say you're on a map and you're a faction that has access to helicopters. As soon as the helicopters drop off personnel <clears throat> and place forward spawn points, they have one priority. <clears throat> Do a scouting loop. Have them fly around for two to three minutes as long as they're not at risk. If you're on a map that's got um, high-powered armor, BTRs, BMPs, Bradleys, <clears throat> and any other number of CTASs and all these other vehicles, as labs and, and labs and stuff like that, and you're driving past the midpoint of the map or you're flying past the midpoint of the map, you are taking a chance. So get high, scout, see where troops are moving to what and what vehicles are moving because it's more concerning for you to understand, hey, they've got a logistics truck flanking far east or far west. They're trying to sneak around behind us and get a back fob, you know, and come behind us and catch, you know, almost catch us like in a pincher move. So you need your uh, helicopter pilots to be recon for the first five to ten minutes of the game. <clears throat> Use your logistics trucks to put your fobs down because when you use a helicopter put, to put a fob down, it's a 100% dead giveaway because of the, the mechanics of the helos. You have to be within 30 or 40 meters of, within the fob radius above the ground, so you have to sit there and hover. You can't drop and then, you know, as you're flying through the zone, you can't offload the points. You've got to sit static. As soon as you sit static in a helo, you become a target. And as soon as you set you set yourself as static, all somebody's do all somebody has to do <clears throat> as a squad leader is say, "Oh, I see a helo. He's on observe." Okay. Well, guess what? There's the observe mark. All I have to do is put a fob creation mark. Boom. I know your radio 100% is is within the radius of that helicopter that's offloading supplies. So. Tell your helos, focus on recon. That's your best thing they can do for the first five, ten minutes of the game. Give you indication as to where your troops are going, as to also what their potential spawn points are. <clears throat> All right, um, let's see. Next thing you know, if you are running an armor squad, and that means tank, BMP, infantry fighting vehicle, even things like a bulldog, or, you know, like there's the ZSU, BMP, that's still classified as armor. This technically isn't armor, but it's got armor principles to it. <clears throat> Just doesn't require a crewman kit. But the key is, don't run alone. Don't take this BMP Zeus out by yourself, okay? Because you're going to get destroyed instantly. Um, all their lats and all their heavy vehicles are going to cycle in on you in a heartbeat the moment you fire you need to have support so that means either infantry on the ground with you and you don't have to necessarily have an armored infantry squad you need to coordinate with another squad leader and say hey is this area clear i want to head up here set up a post you know recon the area and see if i can intercept or inter uh, engage any targets targets trying to push you guys if he tells you it's hot don't go there but if you have a secondary or tertiary piece of armor that can support you as you move up then your chances increase a little bit better. <clears throat> All right. Next thing. As an armor squad, you know, if you've played the game a long time, you know that if you get beyond the first objective on any layer, you are at risk with your vehicle. <clears throat> Whether that's from other enemy vehicles <clears throat> or troops and or troops so my suggestion to you <clears throat> is find an area where you can put a radio down and a repair crate and maybe an ammo crate that way in case somebody's got to hop out and switch off from a crewman kit and switch over to medic to heal themselves they can do that <clears throat> so once you get outside of this main base area you're, you know, once you get past 400 meters uh, from main base on our servers, you're free and clear, meaning 
people can put mines down they can take you out the moment you so so let's just use this right here as an indication this corner right here five creation mark okay so basically once you cross these bridges <clears throat> you're at risk realistically because um, if you die right here an admin's not going to ban anybody for killing you right there and the reason they're not going to kill you or ban you for being uh, taken out an enemy vehicle is because they've got one two three four ways over structure where they can get out of main base right <clears throat> realistically you have more ways than that you can cross this water right here even though you'll take damage in theory you can get across however that's why you don't go alone as a piece of armor on this map you need to make sure you've got people on this outer perimeter protecting this area because this is where you're going to set your repair fobs up you know you'll maybe you'll set one back here right <clears throat> you'll set the repair fob here and maybe you'll put the repair crate like right here on the back side of this right now you don't have to cross these bridges anymore you decrease the opportunity for someone to mine you and as far as resupplying it you can have somebody with a logistics truck <clears throat> you know borrow it really quick and just do two quick runs bang bang half and half reload this fob and then load it back up with supplies and, and drop the uh, truck off at a fob or have that squad leader tell you, hey, just leave it at Maine, I'll pick it up later. <clears throat> Got you. All right. Um, when you set a repair fob, do not put a spawn point there. And I know that sounds selfish, and I know that sounds like non-team play. The reason you don't want to create a spawn point, spawn point, unless, of course, your team has no spawn other than main base. Then that's a different story but early on early match and you still have a couple objectives out on the map that you possess and are not not at risk of losing your your fob for the ammo or the repair crate should not have a spawn point if you want to drop your rally point there absolutely go for it drop a, uh, an ammo crate so you can switch off of um, switch off of crewman rolls to medics so you can heal everybody up absolutely uh, but you only want the repair crate, maybe a rally point, and an ammo crate. That's all you want on that fob because you don't want people spawning in on your repair fob and taking all the ammo off of your, uh, off of your repair fob because that defeats the purpose of it. <clears throat> all right, so overall, when you're thinking about RAS, keep it simple. Use fob radiuses as a planning mechanism on how to move up systematically and methodically don't go 90 percent of the way across the map because if you get wiped out the vehicle is either destroyed and is on a respawn timer or worse your squad got wiped they disabled the vehicle and it's not on burnout or it's not uh, in flames and it's going to blow up so now you've got abandoned supplies dead infantry no spawn point They've got to all spawn back at main or some other objective or some other fob slash hideout that was created. And it may not be near an active objective. <clears throat> and if it's early game, any actually even if it's mid game, there's an opportunity there where all vehicles may be in play. So if all of your vehicles are abandoned in the field because they're disabled and or unable to be retrieved and you have no spawn points, you're truly hosed. You've got to run from main. So keep it simple, don't overthink it, use your fob creations as a way to move up methodically and control areas as you push up. Also look at it from the, the attacker's perspective. Okay, their first objective is likely over here, that means they are potentially coming in this direction. So let's just use what we talked about earlier. We know that with high probability, their first objective is one of these two points right here. So that means, logically, it would be, okay, they're going to push here, or they're going to push here. That's the two most logical pushes from that area, on foot 
or with light vehicles, okay? If their second objective ha happens to kick all the way over here, they're not gonna run on foot 900 meters, okay? They're gonna use a vehicle to move themselves, and that's easier to tell. But when troops are on foot, they're gonna use environment terrain as a means of moving up stealthily. So that's what you wanna try and do. Think about where they're coming from using the same concepts of situational awareness in the previous video, um, episode five, uh, episode six, I believe it was. <clears throat> Focus on the active objectives first. Get your spawn points down. Rally point first is critical. Um, then get your team spawns down, whether it's hideouts or habs. Listen for vehicles. Check your map often keep your situ aware, uh, situational awareness at a high level to try and anticipate where the enemy are coming from versus just randomly going out into the middle of the map because I've seen map layers like Yiharifka as a perfect example and Gorodok where everybody rushes to Stepney or everybody rushes to outskirts and neither one of those objectives are in play and what makes it worse is the fobs that they placed and the habs and all the points that they dropped now become basically worthless because they're nowhere near an active objective. It's a waste of resources for the team and now you have to extend extra effort to go and either retrieve vehicles and retrieve those points or sacrifice it and destroy it. And it's just a waste of manpower and waste of time. Um, always focusing on the active objectives Always keep the same concepts of at least two spawn points, preferably two hideout slash halves supported by a third rally point, or at least one hideout and a rally point physically separate from one another. Putting a rally point inside of the spawn radius of a radio slash fob is useless. You've got a hideout within the same, or hab within the same radius. Why do you need the uh, rally point there? Um, and then active defense. Active defense means for RAS, you have got to have people in fire teams patrolling. And that doesn't mean they're static and stationary on the top of a building. I've seen people sitting on top of buildings with uh, marksman rifles and bipoded machine guns let an entire squad pass below them because they're looking through their scope 600 to 900 meters away and not un ADSing and just looking around them and paying attention to their environment. So. Hopefully you found that information useful. <clears throat> Again, the principles of RAS are randomized, advanced, and secure. You can anticipate to some degree of certainty where the objectives are, but it can change every single time the map loads. So don't guess. Move up methodically. Get your spawn points down. Make sure you've got people to defend the area actively or proactively, and then move up as you coordinate with the rest of your team. My name is Cowboy Chuck. I'm on Twitch Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, typically around 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Stream for four to six hours. Um, hopefully we'll see you in stream. Until next time, hopefully you found this video useful. Drop a, lot, drop a like, drop a subscription to get notified and turn that bell on so you get notified when I drop other videos for highlights, tips, tricks, and things of that nature. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we will see you next time. Peace.